So, uh, o magyana timidan basya, gyanan jana shanakaya, csak surum militam jena, tas maishigura venamaha, namaom vishnu padaya, kusna prastaya butale, srimate bhakti vedanta, svaminiti namine, naste sarasvate devi guravani pracharine, nevisesha shunyavadi pasyati adesha tarine, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadatara Shiva Sadi Gura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Rama Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Chandra Mauli Swami Niti Namine So, Hare Krishna, dear devotees. I'm sorry for being a bit... Uh, um, um how to say <laughs> not so myself today uh this uh this meeting started a bit dif difficult but now i i try to be a bit more composed so um we speak about this verse shriman bhagavatam canto one uh chapter 15 and uh, verse 20 and uh, when i read this verse um i i had uh two uh, different topics in my mind immediately one is that uh, how interesting it was that uh, Arjuna was the greatest fighter uh, on the whole world and um, in the whole world and uh, still when Krishna uh, left the the planet Arjuna was helpless even with uh, ordinary man against uh, ordinary uh, coward man and the other is that uh, it spe also speaks very beautifully this verse about uh, the friendship between uh, the intimacy of the, this friendship between uh, Krishna and Arjuna. And uh, I would like to start with the first one, and uh, because uh, this this friendship topic is so nice that I I think it would be nice to conclude with that one. Uh, so first, uh, when we speak about different uh, abilities, talents. Uh, it's 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 a very relative thing, you know. We we know that oh, I would like to have this talent, that talent, this ability, that ability. I would like to play nicely on a guitar or something. But uh, but different living entities have different tendencies, and they can use different kinds of talents in a different way. So. One thing is to understand what one certain uh, ability is about. Another thing is uh, to do it, to be able to, to, to use that ability. And the third one is how to use it properly. So these are three different things. And uh, just yesterday, something interesting thing happened to, the, to me. Uh, I was going from home to do some shopping. And uh, while leaving my home, I took out the trash to to the trash cans, and when I I uh, I was there, I arrived to the trash cans. There was one bird on top of these uh, trash cans. Uh, they sometimes come and try to to get something which is valuable for for them <laughs> and not so valuable for us. But uh, these trash cans are closed, so they are usually not so successful in their endeavors. But sometimes when there there are uh, too much uh, trash in in these um, bins, and uh, and the the lid is a little bit open, then they have some kind of success. But you know these birds are relatively small compared to us, and they themselves cannot open this uh, these uh, trash cans. And I was wondering why the this uh, this bird flew a little bit uh, further uh, to the fence and, you know, just uh, watching me from afar while I was opening this uh, trash can that uh, <clears throat> it's so interesting that for him, for, for this bird, probably I seem to be such a strong person who has this great ability to, to put all these treasures <laughs> into this this bin, uh, which uh, the bird is just uh, looking forward to get some of it. And it was such an interesting thing that, uh, you know, for me, it's so natural to to just, uh, just open the lid and put everything there and just close it. 
but for the bird, it's it's just uh, impossible to do it. But for me, it's not a valuable um, activity, actually, uh, opening this uh, can, but for the bird, it is. So I just wanted to to tell this story because uh, it's it very nicely speaks about how certain abilities are useful for one person uh, and even valuable, not just useful, but but valuable. For the other person, it might be useful, but not so valuable. <clears throat> and for someone else, it might be useless because you cannot even get any benefit from it. <clears throat> so, when we speak about abilities, we know that all the abilities are uh, original from Krishna. <clears throat> he speaks about it in Bhagavad Gita, st uh, stating that I am the source of our spiritual, our spiritual and material worlds. And uh, so the source of everything. So whatever is here, if uh, if something which we can touch or something we can use, we can uh, um, use in any activities, it's originally from Krishna. But he also says that, oh, son of Kunti, I am the taste of water, the light of the sun, uh, sun and the moon, the syllable Om in the Vedic mantras, and I am the sound in ether and ability in man. So Krishna very, uh, very, um, how to say, he's uh, very straightforward about it, that, uh, that he is everything which we have, even our abilities. And uh, also in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 11, he says that, uh, that among the enterprising, I am fortune, and among the cheaters, I am gambling. I am the forgiveness of the tolerant and the good qualities of those in the mode of goodness. So he again speaks about that he is the origin of all our qualities, all our abilities. And uh, whatever he gives, he can take back anytime. And uh, yeah, he can give it anytime. So usually our uh, I mean, I, our qualities, our abilities are based on um, our nature or um, or talents or um, tendencies, affinities, and also some a few other things which which are learned, which are acquired abilities. And uh, whatever we get during our lifetimes, it's based on on karma and based on mercy. These these two things. Uh, will determine what we can utilize. Sometimes we have the good karma to get something, but uh, sometimes we don't get the good karma, don't have the good karma, but uh, have the mercy, and then we can do it. Probably you also exper experience this, that you don't have the uh, the qualification for something, but, uh, but for example, you have to do some difficult service for Guru Maharaj, and somehow you you can do it, even if you don't have the quality, the ability, and and still you can do it. Some other things we think that uh, we can do something, and and uh, whenever we need it, we just we are just not able to do it. So, because Krishna is the source of all these abilities, uh, he can take back any time. It's different actually from the blessings of the demigods because uh, we heard some uh, some past times about uh, when when Bra lord brahma or lord shiva gave some benediction and the benediction was used against uh, either the demigod himself or even against the the whole world and uh, and uh, krishna's blessings are not like this because uh, because he is the source of everything. So, and and also, if uh, if we get something from him, it's not separated from him. So still, he continues to own, own this uh, this thing and be the source of it. So that's very different from the demigods' uh, boons because when they give something, uh, they get separated from it even the ability or some kind of um, weapon or something. So it's very different because obviously they are demigods and Krishna is 
the supreme personality of Godhead, who is the source of everything, always. And uh, yeah, so sometimes it happens that uh, that something happens to us that uh, that we just uh, we are just not, not able to utilize our abilities. I remember one time when uh, when I was uh, I was playing Lidanga in one bhajan and uh, tried to play one certain rhythm which I I played so many times before and you know even if I'm woken up from my sleep I I can play it and and I remember that in that situation I just completely forgot <laughs> I really I couldn't play it and it was such a nice experience to to see that oh yeah I learned it but uh, but when Krishna thinks I shouldn't be able to play it I won't be able to play it so sometimes it can <laughs> we we have some kind of uh, amnesia or forget something or we we have some kind of uh, accident and, and uh, lose our hearing or speaking ability or lose some body parts which uh, which are in the way of doing something properly so uh so these, <clears throat> these these abilities can be taken anytime from us. And uh, also here it's very interesting in regards of this verse because we can see that, yeah, Krishna uh, somehow taken, uh, 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 took Arjuna's ability, uh, this fighting ability. But in the verse we can see something really interesting. Uh, he says that... Uh, while I was guarding the bodies of all the wives of Krishna. So he doesn't say that while I was guarding the wives of Krishna, but the bodies of the, of, uh, of the wives of Krishna. So in this situation, it's uh, very interesting that uh, although in some sense Arjuna couldn't protect the bodies of the wives of Krishna, but uh, in the purport, Srila Prabhupada nicely uh, explains that uh, actually these so-called coward men uh, couldn't harm the wives of Krishna because, uh, because here it just said that the bodies were, were um, kidnapped. So also some, there are some, some examples that... Um, that uh, someone doesn't seem to have uh, ability for something, but uh, doesn't uh, have the ability for something, but by great, great effort or by great, great mercy, uh, they can have it. Even if uh, there is no spiritual endeavors in involved. For example, I had uh, one friend in university and he really, really uh, had a bad hearing. So he he had some desire to to learn to play on a flute, but uh, but it's very difficult to to play on in instruments, musical instruments, if if the hearing is not not really good. But he continuously practiced and practiced and practiced. I always remember when I I was going home uh, back to the uh, student pastor times, and uh, <clears throat> on the night before he was playing practicing <clears throat> the, uh, some Pony Portmore, <laughs> and uh, after a few years, all of us just uh, just uh, were fed up with Pony Portmore, <clears throat> Pony Portmore, because he was always practicing that one. But uh, years later, I. I I uh, heard him playing and I was really really surprised. That, oh my God, he really became good uh, to such an extent that uh, he even went with uh, some kind of band to play um, Irish Irish music, and uh, people listened to them. <laughs> them so so his endeavors really paid off, and uh, there are even more. Uh, wonderful stories about uh, this, but uh, the basic um, basic message is that 
sometimes it's uh, it's hard work but sometimes uh, sometimes by mercy we can get abilities which we would never think that we are capable of and uh, another very nice example for for these abilities that uh, in uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 11 we can read about uh, the different kinds of uh, mystic abilities and uh, Krishna speaks about this that uh, there are eight uh, primary and uh, and ten secondary mystic abilities, and uh, he narrates that uh, each of these abilities, how how uh, these mystic yogis can uh, can achieve them, and very interesting that for each of these abilities, uh, there should be some kind of meditation on Krishna, but uh, in his different aspects. So it's always always uh, connected to him and uh, here there is a purport uh, from one of these verses which uh, nicely speaks about this that it is significant that in order to acquire each mystic perfection one must fix one's mind on the supreme personality of godhead srila bhaktisiddhanta saraswati thakur states that those who pursue such perfections without fixing the mind in the supreme lord acquire a gross and inferior reflection of each mystic potency. Those who are not conscious of the Lord cannot actually synchronize their minds perfectly with the universal functions and therefore cannot elevate the, their mystic opulences to the universal platform. So it nicely explains that uh, if we want to perfect whatever ability, we have to connect it with the Lord. We have to meditate on him. And uh, and if we don't do that, we can achieve something, but it will be inferior. And uh, about these abilities, there is another interesting uh, topic, because in the beginning, I mentioned that it's a different thing to understand a certain ability. It's a, another thing to, to be able to use it, to do it. And the third thing is that how will we use it? So it's also great responsibility that if we get some kind of uh, ability, how how will we use it? What is our goal with these abilities? So do we want to just use it for sense gratification or or not? Because we can connect it with Krishna and then it will be spiritual spiritualized. But if we don't do that, we use it only in a material way, it will connect us to this material world even more, so it will just result suffering. So the goal is that uh, we should always try to connect everything, every material object, but also all of our abilities with Krishna. Just uh, imagine that uh, you have a, a bag of apple. So what what do you plan to do with the apple just uh, leave it uh, in the corner of the room and let it be rotten because this is the mode of uh, uh, mode of ignorance another thing is that uh, you just use it for for your your sense gratification to to enjoy these apples so that's another thing that's in the mode of passion we can use the apples for for some kind of uh, charity, we can donate it to others. That is in the mode of goodness. But if we offer these apples in, in some way to Krishna, this will be spiritual. This is the best. This will, this will be, uh, be transcendental. And uh, if we have lots of abilities, that's uh, really comfortable. And uh, we can offer them to Krishna. But if we don't have lots of abilities, just uh, small, very little ones, and uh, not so many, that's also not a problem. Because Krishna, whenever he speaks about uh, offering things to, to, to him, he says that if we just offer a leaf, a flower, a little bit of water, that's, that's pleasurable, pleasurable for him. So it's, it's pleasing him if we offer it with love. So always the most important thing in the offerings every offering is love and uh, all the tangible parts of the offering 
are, are just the material as, uh, aspects. That's not so important. Krishna even accepted the, the banana peel from Vidurani because, uh, because she gets into such great ecstasy that uh, accidentally she offered uh, the peel of the banana to Krishna instead of the banana itself. But for Krishna, it was pleasurable because there was love in it. So whatever we have, small or big, we can offer to Krishna. We, we won't suffer any loss, even if it's small in a material sense. So to the other topic, uh, which I mentioned that uh, this verse very nicely speaks about this, uh, the depth of the friendship between Arjuna and, and Krishna. So going back to our verse, I would like to highlight uh, a few things here. Uh, in the word by word translation, we can see quite a few words about friendship. So here it's, uh, there is this word, Sakya, by my friend, Priena, which means my, by my dear most. So uh, dear is uh, Priya. Also Sufrida, by the well-wisher, so these are all, uh, all different, um, different uh, words from different kinds of friends. So to understand these a bit more, I would like to speak about the different uh, categorizations of friendships. So one, uh, one type of uh, categorization I've heard is from uh, Shubha Vilas Prabhu. And uh, he said that uh, the, oh, yeah, I will show the, his his uh, book also uh, where he can. I just stop sharing. So here you can see this this book, the magic of friendships. This is from Shubha Vilas Prabhu. So in this book he he writes about uh, these uh, categories of of friendships, and. Uh, he said that uh, the one of the the levels of uh, friendships is uh, bandhu, or we can say associate. So we have many many bandhus. Uh, they are like colleagues, or or so the the grocery shop owner whom we we be shopping at his place every week. So those who, who meet regularly in our lives, those are, are this, uh, in this category of bandhus. Uh, they can be hundreds in our lives, actually. The second, uh, second category is Sokka. Uh, and uh, Sokkas are those who we decide to, to spend time with. So actually they are a little bit like, like pairs, you know, when we, we just we just like to hang out hang out with them share with them what happened to us and uh, there might be tens of uh, of sakas in uh, in our our lives and uh, he said that the third category is uh, priya saka and these are the confidential friends they are those who whom we we get uh, confidential with we we like to share uh, with them what happened to us on an emotional level. So they they also know about our secrets and uh, and there is a, a more more confidentiality, intimacy in the, in those uh, relationships. And uh, for me, you know, if I, I would like to say what these words mean for me, I would say that the first category is like uh, associates or acquaintances. The second are pairs. The third category is for me what actually friend is. But I, I would have thought that, okay, there are these three categories, but oh, it's really interesting. There is a fourth one. So what is the fourth one? The fourth one is uh, called Suhrit. And it, uh, he said that this is the, the best friends. And, uh, and actually we are lucky if, uh, if we, we have one Suhrit in our life because they they are not just uh, confidential with us, but they have a higher knowledge and they are so uh, selfless. They just uh, wish the best for us. 
that uh, their guidance can lead our life in a in a better direction. So actually, I would it's just my speculation, but I would translate it uh, as mentor because uh, because it, this is a different kind of man, uh, of uh, friendship than the previous ones. And if we check out here, we can see all these words. So Arjuna says about Krishna that he is Saka, he is Priyena. Priya is the root word. So so he is not just Saka, but Priya Saka. And also Sukrida comes from Sukrit. So also the well-wisher. So all these categories are true for Krishna. Uh, he is, he is our, our best friend. There is another categorization uh, that uh, it's from Shesha Prabhu, who is the disciple of uh, Srila Prabhupada. And he categorized uh, friendships based on the scriptures, based on, uh, on motivation. So for in his categorization also, it was Bandhu, the first category. Uh, he translated that as uh, translated this word, a word as uh, kinship, relation, association, friend, or respect. So these are for the first category. And uh, he said that in Hitopadesha, uh, there are, uh, it, it is described that there are four types of, uh, of um, this, uh, Oh yeah, uh, sorry, I I forgot to to mention something here. So also, it's described that what is the uh, the goal of these uh, these types of friendships, and uh, one of these goals was uh, was protection. And uh, so he quoted Hitopadesha that uh, there are different kinds of uh, relationships, uh, protecting relationships, uh, which are based on on. Uh, relationships uh, by blood or relationships by marriage relationships uh, based on the the friend of of the family or someone who protects in uh, in a trouble in a difficulty so these are just uh, some how to say not so intimate type of uh, relationships but uh, you know i it 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 happens to us there is the the second uh, uh, category mitra uh, we also i remember uh, when i i was watching there is a mahabharata series and uh, and uh, karna and duryodhan when they are speak this mitra uh, so is there so so many time times and uh, it refers to their friendship but uh, this is this word is actually used uh, in a general sense uh, for friendship, uh, which is between peers and uh, and mutually beneficial for each party. So I just scratch your back and you scratch back your mine, and uh, this is the 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 friendship. But uh, there is a third one uh, also here, this sukrit, uh, which is about that the. The friendship doesn't depend on what I get from the other person. I just want the best for for him, and him or her, and uh, and without thinking, uh, just uh, acting uh, for the benefit of the other person. So bandhu is uh, when there is some kind of uh, bond between the the two parties. Mitra is when there is no no. Uh, born like like uh, based on on being relatives or or something which which is already there in our circumstances, but we decide to be each other uh, to be there for each other. But there are some kind of uh, uh, mutual benefits, and uh, and the suhrit is the one who is the the selfless selfless uh, person for the other. So when we we hear about this it uh, it becomes uh, maybe a bit more clear how how nicely uh, arjuna speaks about krishna here that uh, he is my friend he is so dear for me he is my my uh, selfless well wisher so these are very very nice words describing uh, krishna's friendship
And uh, also uh, here it says that uh, Ridaena by the heart and soul, Shunya. So when, when Krishna, Krishna disappears, uh, Arjuna's heart becomes like empty. So it's a very nice description. And uh, actually when I was thinking about this verse, it's a little bit like uh, like describes um, the the word verse from uh, Bhagavad Gita, this uh, in chapter four verse uh, three, when uh, when Krishna says that uh, that very ancient science of the relationship with the supreme uh, supreme is today taught by me to you because you are my devotee as well as my friend and can therefore understand the transcendental mystery of this science. So here we, we can see that uh, being the friend of Krishna, it's, uh, it's very valuable uh, in, in so many aspects, but here this verse uh, speaks about it, that that's why we can hear about this uh, transcendental knowledge, and that's why we can understand it, if we are the friends of Krishna. And uh, so this verse, uh, this other verse, uh, uh, speak uh, from Shima Bhagavatam, the verse from for today, speaks about uh, about uh, this uh, friendship between Arjuna and Krishna in in more details. How deep it is, <clears throat> uh, so that Arjuna could hear uh, the Bhagavad Gita and could understand it. And uh, there are also other verses in Bhagavad Gita which uh, speak about the friendship. So one is here, uh, chapter 10, verse number one. Uh, here, uh, the Supreme Personality of God had said, listen again, O mighty armed Ar Arjuna, because you are my dear friend, for, for your benefit, I shall speak to you further, giving knowledge that is better than what I have already explained. So again, Krishna says that because you are my friend, I will tell you even more confidential knowledge. And in the in, in chapter 18, there are two other verses which uh, speak about this. Because you are my very dear friend, I am speaking to you, my supreme instruction, the most confidential knowledge of all. Hear this from me, for this is for your benefit. So again, Krishna, he emphasizes so many times that because you are the friend of mine, I will speak to you knowledge, I will speak to you confidential knowledge, I will speak to you the most confidential knowledge. And continues in the next verse, actually, <clears throat> that uh, always think of me, become my devotee, worship me, and offer your homage unto me, thus you will come to me without fail. I promise you this, because you are my very dear friend. So, not just we can understand this transcendental knowledge if we, can, we become Krishna's dear friend, but we can go back to Krishna without fail. So friendship with Krishna qualifies someone for go, without fail going back to, to Godhead. And you know, when I found all these verses, I, I really started to, to be interested in, uh, because it seemed that Originally, I, I had this idea that, oh yeah, there is Bhagavad Gita, it's such a philosophical knowledge. And now I see that, oh, there are so many verses about the friendship between Arjuna and Krishna. And, uh, and researched uh, in which verses uh, this friendship word is, is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. And, uh, and it was very, very interesting for me. So in the first uh, chapter, Arjuna says, uh, Arjuna uses this word many times, these friends, that when he, he laments that, oh, I have to kill my friends and my friends will die in this battle. And uh, he just laments about uh, his material uh, friends. So then in the, in the fourth chapter, Krishna says the first time that because you are my dear friend, you can hear about this knowledge. Then in uh, chapter six, we can hear about how we can make uh, our uh, friend make 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 our uh, our mind uh, our friend. So if we don't uh, regulate our mind, 
uh, the mind will be the enemy, but if we regulate it, it will become the friend of, uh, of ours. So we can also hear this, uh, how it's uh, this spiritual life starts that, that we have to befriend our mind actually. Then in, uh, in chapter nine, we can hear about how we can be Krishna's friends. It's very interesting again. So in, uh, in chapter nine, verse uh, 18, Krishna speaks about how he is our friend. So he says that I am the goal, the sustainer, the master, the witness, the abode, the refu refugee, and the most dear friend. I am the creation and the annihilation, the basis of everything, the resting place and the eternal seed. So here he says that he is our most dear friend. And he's, he uses this word, which we speak, uh, spoke about, the sukrit the most intimate friend. So now we know that uh, Krishna is our friend, but what about us? Are we his friends? Or we just forgot about it and don't want to be? <laughs> so 11 verses later in the same chapter, there is this verse that uh, I am the no one, nor am I partial to anyone. I am equal to all, but whoever renders service unto me in devotion is a friend, is in me and i am also a friend of a friend to him so here we can read about how we can be krishna's friends and it's not so difficult actually we have to re render service unto him in devotion so in this chapter this is the friendship chapter for me <laughs> this chapter nine uh, in in two verses we can hear about krishna's friendship and our friendship and uh very interesting. The the chapter title is that this is the the most confidential knowledge. <laughs> so this is the the confidential knowledge how we can be Krishna's friends. So then moving forward uh, in chapter ten, uh, we can again uh, we we read this one. We can again hear that uh, how we can get the the more more confidential knowledge uh, by being the friends of Krishna. And uh, what happens in chapter 11, uh, when, when uh, Arjuna sees the, the universal form of Krishna, he starts to, to lament that, oh, how, um, how confidentially I behaved with you when, when I was so friendly with you, but, but now I see that, oh, it was such a great mistake. <laughs> so, so we can see how it can be a difficulty uh, at some point, if uh, if we don't, if we we focus on Krishna's universal form instead of his sweet, lovable, two-armed form, and after that, uh, there is a, again another shift in in the topic of friendship because Krishna starts to speak about uh, how those who are his devotees are friends of all the other living entities. So he says that uh, that those don't uh, one. Oh, I I forgot to search these these uh, verses, but I I will do it now. So here is one verse, my dear Arjuna. He who engages in my pure devotional service, free from con contaminations of fruitive activities and mental speculation, he who works for me who makes me the supreme goal of his life and who is friendly to every living being, he certainly comes to me. So here it is said that, uh, that he is without enemy. Actually, this is the, uh, the word here, which is trans translated that uh, friendly to every living being, meaning that he, he has no enemies because usually uh, we divide others as friends and enemies, but those who have no enemies, those can certainly go back to Krishna. And, and uh, then in, in chapter 12, this topic continues. One who is not envious, but is a kind friend to all living entities uh, continues. Uh, and such a devotee of mine is very dear to me. So 
here it said that this Maitra, uh, this Mitra, maybe you remember this word from the categorization, who is friendly with, uh, with everyone, those are very dear to Krishna. So there are other verses also in... Uh, here. One who is equal to friends and enemies, who is equipoised in honor, dishonor, such a person is very dear to me. So here is, uh, it also speaks about this Mitra. So those who are equal to friends and enemy, enemies, actually it means uh, again that uh, someone who has no enemies. And uh, I have one, one last verse, which is uh, in chapter 14. This is still the same topic. Mm. So here, Yeah, who treats alike both friend and enemy. So here this is. Uh, here the word, words are, are uh, yeah, Mitra. Mitra and uh, this Ari. So again, again this uh, Mitra. So I would like to point out something that uh, this Mitra is not the confidential friend. So sometimes it's a difficulty for us that, oh, how should I be friends with everyone? But uh, this Mitra is not the confidential type of friendship. That's Saka or Priya Saka. So we don't have to be confidential with everyone, but we have to be the well-wisher or we, we should be friendly with everyone. We shouldn't have enemies, Don't shouldn't... Um, uh, judge that, oh, this person is my friend, this is my enemy. So we should be friendly with everyone, and this is the qualification here. And uh, so the the last topic of uh, of about friendship in Bhagavad Gita is the one which uh, we discussed in uh, chapter 18, when Krishna again speaks about how being friendly with him is, uh, is a qualification for the most confidential knowledge, and is a qualification to to go go back to him, go back to Godhead. So it's a very nice uh, journey <laughs> through Bhagavad Gita through friendship, I think. And uh, and for me, actually, it was really surprising. But uh, based on this, uh, we we learned that uh, that uh, yeah, we should uh, we should be the friends of Krishna. We should make the uh, the mind also our friends. And we shouldn't divide other people as friends and enemies, but should be friendly with all. And uh, this is the Bhagavad Gita's uh, teaching about friendship. So I would conclude now and uh, hope uh, there was something interesting uh, in it for you. And let's uh, open up for discussion. So let's see uh, if you have any comments, questions, real realizations to share. Uh, yes, Mother Scarlett? Hi, Krishna. Thank you Hare very, Krishna. very much for today's class. I'm so sorry that I can't have my camera on. I have bad computer. My own computer has broke down, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to fix one. Uh, anyway, uh, what? Um, very nice today. Very, uh, I, I learned a lot, but there is just something you uh, mentioned that uh, one who doesn't have enemy mm -hmm. in my uh, in my experience in life uh, coming from war country uh, mm -hmm. fleeing from war country to to uh, sweden uh, i had i was not enemy to anyone i didn't want to have any war i didn't want to fight with anyone sometimes mm -hmm. it's that not that you are going to, you are creating the enemy, but there are people that they don't, you don't, they don't need to have reason to, to hate you, to be your enemy. And they are. Mm -hmm. What about them then? 
Is it my fault that they are my enemy without, sometimes even without I know about it? Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's it's not possible. Uh, you know, it's a two-sided thing. So it's not like uh, one person of the two parties decide that, okay, I want uh, to be the enemy of the other person. And, uh, and it uh, determines the relationship. Uh, it can be that uh, the other person uh, considers as enemy, and it can be that you consider the other person as enemy. And we can see that even Krishna had enemies, uh, but not because he considered them enemy, but because those persons considered him as enemy. So, for example, there, there were all the demons. For example, the always the, the first person coming into my mind is uh, Shishupal, who just always blasphemed Krishna. Always. And in the end, Krishna even, uh, he tolerated to such a great extent. Uh, in the end, he killed him, but uh, we know that it was his mercy. But uh, but uh, the main point here is that the Shishupa considered Krishna as his enemy, but uh, it's uh, never said that Krishna considered him as enemy. So if someone decides to, to hate us, uh, it doesn't mean that that we are their enemy. It means that they are our enemy. I mean, okay, maybe it's it's not. Uh, I do, couldn't uh, express it properly, but uh, but maybe you understand that uh, each party decides how they handle the relationship. Mm. So your responsibility is that if you consider the the other person as enemy. Okay, thank you. Thank you for my, for your question. Does anyone has anything to 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 add? Probably you all have some kind of uh, experiences, realizations, because these are big topics. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mati, thank you so much for that. It's a wonderful uh, topic and it's really a very deep topic. And uh, one comment or a question I have, like, you know, uh, when you give an example of your friend, so anybody in that situation, when I'm endeavoring for something continuously and and eventually I achieve it, it we propagate to be making that it is my achievement. For, for some reason, at least, you know, uh, personally, uh, I, my thought process is we don't think that whatever the endeavor we have been doing, that endeavor itself was the mercy of Krishna. That's why we were continuously trying to do that without leaving it. And eventually we got it because we had that desire and endeavor. Uh, but that is the Krishna's mercy. We forget that and say, okay, I achieved it and it's it's mine and, you know, I am doing it. So why, why is that like, you know, and, and is that... Is that our propensity that, you know, we are trying to go away uh, considering Krishna as a friend because of that ego that comes out, even though the mercy is from Krishna for whatever the endeavor you have done? Uh, I'm just not sure if I understood the question. I, I understand uh, your point that uh, whenever we do some endeavor, um, yeah. In the end, if we can achieve it, we many times we think that oh, I achieved it. This is the results of my actions. Yeah. And uh, do I understand it properly that your question is that why is there this tendency? Yes, okay. yes, Mother, it's how to mm -hmm. because that, yeah. that is the that is a general tendency. So how to mm -hmm. you know get out of it to understand that at any point of time it is because of Krishna <laughs> that you have achieved what you have achieved, mm -hmm. and and you know keep that in mind. Yeah, actually, you know, this is just the extreme example. Uh, even uh, slighter endeavors, there is the same thing. So, okay. so obviously, in the extreme, it will be the same in an extreme extent. Extent, but uh, as Krishna says in in Bhagavad Gita, that uh, we like to to think that we are the doers, even uh, if the three modes of nature are actually uh, those who 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 do it but uh, my understanding in this in this regard is that if if we didn't do it 
then we immediately understood that, uh, okay, if I cannot do anything, then I won't be happy here. Whatever I do, I will never achieve happiness. I never achieve anything. So we have to to just, uh, you know, embrace this uh, this uh, illusion that I can achieve something because if I work harder, then I will achieve happiness. So this is just the basic mentality and it has many aspects. One is like, I think that, oh, I achieved this. But the other aspect is that, uh, that yeah, if I work harder, I will achieve it and I can be happy. So yeah. this is unfortunately our, our basic uh, illusion. And uh, this is actually the <laughs> role of the fourth ego uh, in order. I mean, this shouldn't be, but uh, but uh, this is how the fourth ego serves our material illusion, material endeavors. But uh, yeah, yeah, uh, it's it's always nice to to remind uh, ourselves that uh, that uh, we are what to say that we are just uh, dependent on on gurus and uh, krishna's mercy because we can never achieve anything without their mercy yes no. uh i i always remember one quote from one daily drops from from uh, guru maharaj i won't be able to to say it word by word now but uh, when he he said that uh, whatever we uh, we achieve whenever we do something all the uh, our abilities are from Krishna. All the facilities are from Krishna. All the willpower is from Krishna. Mm -hmm. All the every everything is from Krishna. And uh, and in the end, Krishna just uh, you know pats us on the shoulder and say says that oh you are such a nice devotee. You do, did such a nice job and you were so so um, professional in this thing. But but everything we we got in order to to be able to do it uh, it's it's from him and also many times we experience this that whatever yes. we try to do uh we we make so much effort and somehow still cannot achieve what we want so that's that's the reality actually that's what we are in ourselves without krishna yes. uh, or, you know, even in those situations, we are not without Krishna, but uh, maybe you, you understand, <laughs> you got the point. Yes, Matu, yeah, I got it, I got it, yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. So, thank you thank so you much so for, much. for your, your question. Thank you, thank you for the class again, Matu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Sona, Sona Mataji. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna, all the devotees. It was such a wonderful class. You, you always bring such such a different perspective and it, it makes everything so easy to understand uh, so thank you thank you again for the class and i was really stuck on this this uh, idea that krishna is our friend uh, for last two weeks you know i was trying to see how how can we think that krishna is our friend and you made it so easy to understand so thank you thank you so much again uh, thank you you know it's always uh, krishna's Krishna's mercy, what kind of thoughts come? So I even when I, I started to do the, this research in Bhagavad Gita about friendship, I was like, oh my God, such an amazing journey. And you know, it's uh, it's something for which Krishna sends. So I'm yeah, I mean I, I completely agree, you know, because I've started attending these classes for the last two months or so, and every time some some question comes, uh it literally gets answered in less next week or two, you know. So it is. It is. It has to be the mercy. It can't be anything else. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. It's so amazing. And sometimes, you know, when we read something, also it's it's so nice to to experience that all the scriptures are are are, are Krishna actually personally. So so we can have a loving relationships also with these books, and it's so amazing. So amazing. It's such a nice. And, it's explained through the devotees, you know, so although I don't have the capacity to understand it, but then it just unfolds, everything just unfolds so simply, you know, so easily. So thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much for jo joining. And yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, actually, as I, as I see, there are no more questions and uh, we are, we just reached the hour. 
So if there are no more questions, we can close the call now. Thank you very, very much for today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Matadi. Thank you, Thank you so much for joining. So uh, our glory is to the devotees, our glory is to Guru Maharaj, our glory is yes. to Krishna. Thank you so much.